today and would like to speak about a case. Please provide your name clearly into the microphone and please be sure to sign in either at the back of the room or at the podium for documentation purposes. If you're here today to speak about a case, you must speak up when the chairperson calls for public comment. Mr. Colsey? Mr. Cook? Ms. Davis? Here. Mr. Harp? Here. Ms. Thomas? Here. Mr. Tupper? Here. And Mr. Frost? Here. We have a quorum. I'll give a brief review of the meeting format. Applicants would request before the Planning Commission on any presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project case, of the project case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicants, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the Planning Commission or staff regarding requests. During the public comment period, members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns and in order than two minutes. After the public comment period, applicants have five minutes to respond. Once the Planning Commission begins deliberation, no additional comments will be permitted by the applicant or the public. The administrator does have a time limit and will make presenters aware of when their time has expired. The Planning Commission reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case basis. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are not any changes since publication. Great. The Planning Commission uses the consent agenda to approve only controversial routine matters by a single motion. Examples of such items include approval of site plans, annexations, and street names. If a member of the Planning Commission or the general public wants to discuss an item on the consent agenda, you must speak up after the consent agenda is read. Then the item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the read. The Planning Commission then approves the remaining consent agenda items. And we'll go ahead and read through the consent agenda. The first item is to approve the May 11th, 2023 meeting minutes. The first case is an interim future land use map amendment and an interim zoning map amendment for pending annexation. Case Annex-2023-0012, 118, 118.5, 126, 132, 138 North Road. Request recommendation for the assignment of interim land use classification of urban core mixed residential type 3 and the assignment of interim zoning The property is currently classified as mixed residential high density and zoned residential multifamily medium density and residential multifamily high density in Richland County. The next case, Case 3, is a future land use map amendment and zoning map amendment for pending annexation. Annex-2023-0008, 10.01 acres on the north side of Richard Street. Request recommendation for the assignment of land use classification of transitional sensitive lands and the assignment of zoning of plan development district portions within the floodplain overlay district and the floodway overlay district for pending annexation. The property is currently classified as economic development center corridor and zoned accordingly by Richland County. Under major site plan review, we have Case 4, S Plan-2023-0007, 1.4 acres on Liberty Liberty Ridge Drive. Request major site plan approval for the construction of a child care center, the Big Blue Marble Academy. The property is zoned PD plan development and Wood Creek Farms. Under major subdivision preliminary plat review, Case 5, S Plat-2022-0005, 2.62 acres, Atlas Road and Greenlaw Road. 
request preliminary plot approval for the construction of an 11 lot single family residential subdivision. The point the property is currently zoned R2. And under zoning map of K6, ZMA 2023 0008. 3.85 acres on the south side of Trinity Drive. Request recommendation to rezone the property from office and institutional district to residential mixed district RM1. And that concludes the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there anyone from Planning Commission? Or the public that would like to see a move from the consent agenda?
this particular case. The crew was around 
I think that adding 31 challenges people that are going to be in is just going to push this system over the edge. Major upgrade. I think we're looking at possibly putting in a major disaster. Just last holiday season, right in front of us, probably, there was a major main break which caused a lot of distress in the neighborhood. Just a flood. And crews came out and took a point of will figure out where the break was and dig it up and fix it. Now we have another patch in our street. So if the developer would like to make a major upgrade to the infrastructure so that he can put his project in, fine. But short of that, I can't see any way to really um, give my approval to this. I buy a property there and I have a vested interest. And I see how these repairs are just going to be my problem. People drive down the street, bumpity, 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 steel plates, and they look around and they think, well, I don't want to do this stuff. So I want to preserve the neighborhood. Is that my time? Oh, my God. Okay, well, thank you.
side of the development, it will have a concrete curb, while the right side will have an asphalt valley gun. So my question was, what are zoning of city and county for people on the street? Because the road is not wide enough for street parking on either overall or super. Well, county nor city had thought about that. And they really didn't know what to do because you can't get an emergency vehicle
Thank you, sir. discussion and we just want to make sure that we put it on the 
transition from this valve. Like you see chains. And then uh, another email. It would be exhibit B, and that is from no dip. Big 
full. Oh, yes, it's this case. Yes, I am. I'm Karen Mitchell, and I live at 1503 Mountain Street. I'm next to this vacant lot. The book, the Mount Vernon book, the Rick Mount Vernon, the Mount Vernon, and the Mount The school says at the top of the hill. That intersection at that corner is very dangerous. We've had wrecks running into the house. That come from Glendon Road. There is no parking there. I mean, if you want to build something there, you've got to build parking. It's a long way for school children because the school is at the top of the hill. There's no sidewalks, there's nothing. So I feel that building something that will take away the ambiance. system. 
system in the state of South Carolina and Gills Creek watershed. All that work done post 2015 flood stops at Tommy's Car Wash. So that last leg of it has never been cleaned up, has never been improved, and it doesn't flow correctly. So every bit of development improved is significantly impacting this watershed, and we don't know the true impact. So it may start here on their area of town, but it is moving through all of our areas, and it is going to negatively impact this city as a whole. Look into Horry County and what they did. They had to devalue the properties and pay out property owners for loss of value due to their overdevelopment. They are working with Coastal Carolina to attempt to recover their ecosystem that they damaged from overdevelopment and all of the properties they put in the flood zone. I say this because it's going to impact our city negatively because we don't communicate and we have no idea what's being developed next door. We have to look at the big picture while we are trying to navigate housing shortages. But you can't devastate and put homes in flood zones for the sake of a shortage. Thank you. If there 